So Imam uh, Muhammad has uh, given us many definitions. He said that darkness means hidden from the eyes of the ordinary person. Mm -hmm. Now we have many definitions of darkness. Darkness means hidden from the eyes of the ordinary person. It doesn't mean that it's hidden from the eyes of anybody else. <laughs> then he says light. What does light represent? Light represents the science. Scientific knowledge. In the light of the heavens is, uh, is uh, uh, the uh, uh, spiritual science. And the light of the earth is the social and material sciences. So, the Holy Quran, which is our book, is, uh, there's a word in the Holy Quran called Balab, Bal uh, El Balabatu, or Balab. That means the penetrating word. That means the words in the Holy Quran to penetrate back right to your soul. Amen. Muhammad, he had mentioned about uh, 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 Frederick Douglass. That he had a, a way of, uh, of composing words and messages that was like firing a shot. And that shot go right to the heart of the man. The army Elijah Muhammad had that same ability. That he would give that word and it would penetrate back to the core of the being. When he said that the white man is the devil, don't you think that penetrated to the core of his being? <laughs> and when it penetrated to the core of his being, he had to start looking around him and say, am I the devil? And start working on his mind. <laughs> the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. And when that Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, the devil was dead. It was it. It was over for him. Because every trick that's in the book, you will find it in the Holy Quran. It tells you all the tricks of Satan. There's no more out there. Every scheme, all of it, is right there in the Holy Quran. And then every solution to every problem is right there in the Holy Quran. There's nothing left out. The Holy Quran said, Imam Muhammad said, there's nothing left out. You read the Quran, you'll see that. The Holy Quran is a universal book that uh, solved every problem and is with, so the Holy Quran is big. It is so big, the word for it is Akbar. Akbar means big, right? So in the time of Prophet Muhammad, the universal messenger, he was he was a giant yeah. in character, because he was a, had the best of character. He was big. And everybody else had to measure up to Prophet Muhammad. Then Allah blessed him with a big word. But he was living in a small town. A big message in a small town. So Satan was small in that time. It shows you in the Bible how the snake, uh, 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 Satan starts out as a snake. But he goes on, he gets bigger and bigger, and at the end he's a dragon. We've seen movies of uh, how, how uh, a person would have a, a sword and he'd come up with a big giant dragon and he, he'd take that sword out of his, uh, the, the cover and he, he'd cut off the head of the dragon and the dragon is, is dead. Prophet Muhammad did that. But the problem is that uh, people began to misread the scriptures. They misread the Bible. They misread the Torah. They misread the Holy Quran. And who did that? Who caused that? Satan caused the people to misread the Bible, the Quran, and the Torah, and all the rest of the book. So, so in 1975, we found out, we didn't know, that Satan ruled the whole world. He ruled the whole world. He ruled the religious world, the scientific world, and the business world. And we know he's ruling the business world right now. Because the religious world is getting off the, the effects of Satan. Teaching, keep, keeping everybody on the physical level. In concrete. When they have you accepting things on the physical level, on concrete, you are dead. That's why I call concrete. Somebody mentioned fossilized, right? Yes, yes, yes. They got movies out there, The Living Dead. Yeah. You know how they talk about these, uh, these, these uh, zombies walking around, mm -hmm. and then only a few people, very few people are alive, and they're trying to uh, avoid the, the zombies from, uh, from killing them, or a, a vampire all over the place, and only a few of them. 
the still human, and they're trying to avoid the love. This is the time of the living day. Then they say, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Farah Muhammad and our woman, uh, Elijah Muhammad, it says that we're, we, the dead need to be raised. We're living in a time that the dead has indeed been raised up. So, uh, let me just uh, move on a few things and I'll uh, close it up. There's a um, God is the truth and the reality. You know, if you have reality and you, uh, you know, you can have, uh, you can go to China, for example. The Chinese language is a reality there. And it works for them. But once they step out of China, they come into another country, it's out of place. Mm -hmm. There's a whole, there's a, the reality change. Now God is the reality. And everything else is temporary. Mm -hmm. You might say, well, I'm real. Yeah, I just wait about a hundred years to see how real you are. <laughs> God is the truth and the reality, and it is permanent. God will never die. That's right. And you, you take a look at our, uh, our, uh, the tenets of our religion, the, uh, the five pillars, it will never die. Mm -hmm. It will always be the five pillars. Mm -hmm. The six basic beliefs will never die. Mm -hmm. It will always be the six basic beliefs. Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad, he is the last prophet. He is our leader, and he will never die. Mm -hmm. Imam Muhammad said, the leaders don't die. We let them die within ourselves. Yes, good point. Leaders don't die. We let them die within ourselves. <laughs> and that's what happened, is that in the Islamic world, they were teaching the words, and uh, going through the rituals, but they were not giving the people the keys, and they were dead. And it said, uh, it said that they uh, that they would go to sleep. Sleep is dead. You know, animals they sleep through life. Mm -hmm. A rabbit is doing the same thing. Has been doing the same thing for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Eat, sleep, and have babies, and die. <laughs> so human beings is sleeping through life. And if you sleep into life, you're dead. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, the only way like Muhammad says, big things awake the wide awake person. Come on. So somebody had to wake you up. Fall off wake Now, take a look at, uh, uh, take a look at something right here. Go ahead. If a person in his wagon, he drops you off, and he is gone. Ten miles down the road, and you so far behind, you will never catch up. You walking, right? Yes. But if some type of way somebody gives you a vehicle that goes a hundred miles per hour, you are gonna catch him and pass him. Right. Don't you know that your mind can be accelerated? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And if you look at what happened to the African American, we were brought over here from Africa. And robbed of the knowledge of self and emptied up our knowledge, they treated us so bad that they thought it'd be a thousand years before we ever catch up to the rest of civilization. Mm -hmm. A thousand years mm -hmm. that we as human beings would come back in our human form. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't for the grace of God, That's right. that when they put us on that plantation and they put us through that slave making machine, that yeah. factory. When we came out of that, that factory that made slaves and made animals or made you less than animals, we came out as human beings. Oh, that is the grace of God. Yes. So we should be witnesses of God. We should be witnesses of God. So we have to look at ourselves as human beings and realize the condition that we were in, we were in the hands of people that was heartless. Mm -hmm. They had no heart. Mm -hmm. They was heartless. Right. Anytime that they would take and do what they did to Emmett Till, those people had to be heartless. Yes. Yes. Anytime they would beat and kick and, and uh, uh, the, the women and take a, a child from one a family and uh, put it on another plantation and, 